This is in the Pursuit of Joy podcast. It's Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern. If you listen to this podcast weekly, you'll know that, but I, I, I'm only saying it because I have to basically remind myself of what day it is on account that I've been moving around a lot. And um, I really, I had a hard time figuring out where, what day it was at some point. And it's, I guess you have, um, you're gonna have to be there, but uh, I hope you're, uh, you had a great week last weekend. And uh, of course they had a, we had a Memorial Day weekend. So kind of a short work week. And um, I hope that you spent it uh, wisely and, and peacefully with your family and friends. And um, you already know that I was on, on travel. Uh, I was on, a, on a, a little adventure. I didn't feel like uh, coming back to the home base uh, following the, the, the cruise leaving out of Miami. So that was a good uh, road trip. I won't be doing another road trip. I, someone suggested that I do that um, this week. And I looked at the map and I looked at gas prices and I realized now this is <laughs> not gonna happen. Uh, that's not gonna lead to any joy. Uh, I'm not saying I'm cheap. I'm just saying that there was uh, no way to justify um, just taking off. Uh, Sometimes a road trip has to happen and it, it should come out of the blue and it should be enjoyable. So in this case, I would have to plot, and, and I know me, I want to plot where I'm going and um, I just don't want to get too, too clingy with uh, you know strict planning and all that. I just want to enjoy being on the road and just being free, which offered me a whole lot more freedom than being on the cruise ship. And I mentioned that last week briefly and I have to do a lot more with uh, the fact that I'm, I'm hitching a ride someplace from point A to point B to point C and back. And, um, and even then, when you get off the ship, there are some restrictions. You still have to check out and check in. There's accountability. Um, so to an extent, there's, there's more freedom because I'm, I'm, I'm going someplace. Nobody's really stopping me um, unless something major happens, uh, an act of God or uh, my passport is expired or something really weird like that. Or maybe if I get sick, you know, God forbid. Um, so there, there are a few factors that could keep me from, from actually going anywhere. Um, and of course, to actually enjoy uh, uh, the journey. So, so given those parameters, I thought that driving back was the best way. I, I thought initially I wanted to do a, a drive up from Miami to Sanford and Sanford is where you catch the uh, auto train and that one comes all the way back up to Virginia. It takes like 27 hours and uh, so you take your car and then just save gas I guess and uh, you can sleep overnight and see the sights um, from a really nice cozy room. If you're smart enough you get a room, uh, your own little cabin on a train. I'll do that at one, one point. I, I know I'm going to do that. I, I like trains. But it just didn't seem feasible to me to, after being on a, you know, on a cruise ship. And then I thought I really would enjoy more just driving into a town and just kind of winging it, um, booking a hotel on, on, at the last second. And when it's, you know, sun is, sun is dropping and I'm thinking, I think I want to go hunker down someplace and get a meal and, you know, shower and then start my trip all over again in the morning. So... Um, I enjoyed that, but going across uh, the U.S., uh, no, uh, I would end up in uh, Seattle in a matter of days, and from there, I'm going to be going to Alaska, and that's going to be a week. Um, of course, I will be doing some pod podcasting. I should do more. I, I think I slacked a little bit on that one, but it was my birthday month, and I, I will give myself a little break on that one. Uh, I mean, I, I really, in retrospect, I, I really consider that I should have done at least a couple more podcasts. And I did talk to people. I should have recorded that. I uh, Perhaps uh, that's something that I can integrate in the next few weeks. It's just, just people that I meet actually record them. And I did some, uh, but it's not like I did a, an extensive interview or anything. Just, just wanted to see how people live and how they work and how they find their joy. And um, pretty much... Uh, that's what I did uh, every time that I went into during my uh, my road trip back to Virginia. So uh, well, we'll see if that's something that I want to keep doing. It seems like it's going to lead that way. 
um, because joy is something different to every per person. So it should be interesting to find out. Um, I, I, there's something about this week that has been frustrating in a funny way. I've had a craving for ice cream. I don't know why I'm talking about ice cream, but uh, I'm not, it's not like I'm running out of uh, topics to talk about, but uh, I had a thing for ice cream and I thought I'd go ahead and indulge myself uh, before I go back to eating nuts and twigs again, like I normally do. And I don't buy it to eat it at home, like every day and all that out of a tub. I just buy enough to enjoy, but um, there's something about ice cream and enjoyment in the moment because every single place that I've visited lately and I mean, I've gone to like 20 miles out of my way to go get ice cream because it was highly rated place. And uh, it turns out that when you tell them, you know, kind of get it to go, they say, yeah, sure. Then they, they, they scoop it, put it in the cup. And I'm just all excited. Like I'm going to put it in my car. And I know I have just, a, uh, just enough time to transport the, uh, the, the coveted treat back to my hidey hole. And then I enjoy it uh, later on in the day after my dinner or whatever. Uh, usually when I do that, I have some dessert to pair it with. Um, so if I enjoy it in, in the moment, then, then I know that was actually a treat and I just wanted to taste it then. Uh, I don't do that often. Normally ice cream is something that's gonna, I'm going to put on top of something else. I already have a battle plan. And uh, that was one of those times. Uh, this last place had apple pie by the slice and they gave me with that. I, I mean, I don't bake anymore, but that's one of my favorite things. So apple pie a la mode, you can't beat that. I mean, if you, if you, if you find something else that's better than that, let me know. Uh, you can let me know any time, but I, I would, I have a hard time uh, I, agreeing with that point. I mean, cheesecake may be a second, close second, um, but you don't put ice cream on cheesecake, at least not that I know of. But um, every single place, they just hand you a cup and they put the spoon in it, they stick it in there, like, go eat it, enjoy it. And I'm like, no, I want to transport it. I thought I said in plain English. It wasn't plain English. It's, yeah, you can take, get it to go. They put it in a cup and hand it to you. Um, I have to laugh about it now because it, it, it is just dumb. Just fussing about it. But at the same time, uh, it just taught me a little lesson about how people see ice cream. It's so fleeting because if you don't eat it quickly, it's just going to turn into, you know, drinkable uh milk and cream and sugar. And I'm not against that. I've, I've, I've had that. Uh, it's not a milkshake, but I'm just saying that I've, I've enjoyed ice cream in any form. And even if it's melted, I'm going to enjoy it as well. So I would think in the back of my mind, like, you know what, screw it. If it's going to melt, it's going to melt. Uh, I'm going to try to put it in part of the car where it's the shadiest part. And like they just turn on the AC as, as, as low as I can, full blast. And I'll get it I'll get it in there in time, put it in the freezer. So it actually worked out, but every place I've been to has not have any form of um, um, putting the ice cream in a cup and put a lid on it to, to be transported someplace other than, you know, spoon to mouth. So um, just a little, just a little note about ice cream, but it, it, I guess, I guess it kind of should teach me about just enjoy good things in the moment. Sometimes you can't take it with you. So it leads me into uh, the topic about uh, hanging on to stuff that doesn't work. <laughs> Ice cream does not work once you digest it, it goes straight to the hips, that's okay. You know, you can't live life just, I'm, I'm not gonna be in my deathbed, however, however the method is of my exit. Um, I'm not gonna worry about, you know, that one cup of ice cream that got away. Uh, I certainly hope not. Um, it will be, you know, but I missed that one time. I didn't get up early in the morning to watch the sunset. Yeah, that may be something that will be a little bit more soul staring, but um, there's something to be said for a great cup of ice cream, you know, and, and there's something to be said for great experiences, but it's, it's in the awareness that we discover that there's something to be enjoyed or there's something that we need to pay attention to. And going briefly back to my road trip was just driving through a town and, and just actually talking to people and they smile because they, they see someone from out of town and um, that the fact that I looked them up 
and I, I went there specifically to see that town, um, no matter how small out of the way it was. Um, and they get all, they get all bubbly talking about, yeah, you can go hiking, you can do this, you can do that. And, and they, you can hear them, the joy and the pride of where they are, no matter how, how tiny the town is or uh, whether they're selling you coffee or maybe some ice cream that you can take to go in the cup without a lid on it. So these are the things we don't get to take, like the physical stuff, like the ice cream, you can't take it with you. You'll you consume it, which is one of the drawbacks. It's one of, it's one of the, I think it's the downside of being, being here as a human is that we don't, we don't get to take anything when you cross into whatever it is we came from. Um, maybe the Egyptians thought of it, like maybe they could try to hack that and uh, bury very important people with their crap, their pets, um, that their best bling, and somehow their their memories and uh, their power would be transported across that threshold into the unknown. I think we know where we come from. We just forget when we're born. Um, just as soon as we start going to school, that stuff gets it gets perched out of the brain and then we don't really rem uh, remember anything. But uh, we, I think we all do know where we come from and possibly even know how long we have here. It's just we lose the conscious, um, the conscious uh, idea of why we came here and then we have to figure it out. That's one hell of an assignment, if you ask me. Um, I'm not going to talk about attachment today, but um, yeah, I had some good topics about attachment this past week. Uh, with, uh, I did mention there was a family member on the sister-in-law side, who, uh, close relative died from cancer and uh, was in a third remission, I believe. And I just, I just came back with a full force and uh, it was something that cannot be overcome, but um, it's, it's how people react to when someone they, they're close to is, is down, you know, they're on the way out and it, it becomes a crusade um, almost to try and make their their last few days or weeks or months uh, uh, as comfortable as possible. And uh, sometimes sometimes we turn a little bit into that martyr sim, you know syndrome. Um, but that's that's for the next that's for the next podcast. Um, just have a couple of stories to share with you. But um, the thing about letting go. Uh, it's, it's more about, I, I think I'm going to segue into next week's about attachment because we, we get attached to the idea that we think we can change other people or make them better. And I've been thinking a lot about, lately about non-interference. I know uh, Wayne Dyer used to talk about that a lot in his lectures. Um, I have a couple of his books. I have yet to finish them, but uh, I have watched them in video, and I know he talked about it a lot. Uh, unless you're, you're you're certain that someone is about to hurt themselves in a bad way, it's something catastrophic. You gotta let people just trip of their, of their own two feet and just fall flat on their faces. It's it's part of the experience. Um, I know when I've I've. I've known people that knew, knew that I was in trouble, but they let me fall flat anyway. They didn't think that it was their, their place. It's very interesting. Many years ago, I would have said, I, didn't, I did not appreciate their, their hands off attitude. But today I have to say that, yeah, because I had to go through that to learn what I did learn. It was a personal matter. And not to, and first of all, not to hang on or get too attached to, to people. I know we have families and relationships. We have parents and siblings, and, um, and I'll tell you about my siblings next week. I'm not quite ready to. I, I have that set aside because it's all about the attachment issue that um, that I observed through the attitudes that people have when somebody is on their way out, and they seem to have like they have to save the world. Uh, I think we all go through it. I don't think I did when my parents were were dying and. Uh, I ended up being stuck doing everything pretty much, especially with my mother. Um, I won't jump ahead, but uh, it becomes a business. It just becomes more transactional. Um, I, I see 
my relationships with people turning into the more more like when you you welcome someone into the job <laughs> and somebody had a baby so someone died in the family but, but a few months ago someone arrived fresh you know a new recruit got a new person no little one uh, that was in march so this is june and um so the little tyke's already growing uh, you know, fat and happy, and I guess just going through the, the motions, as we all do. Uh, those of us who land here and live and get to, to live our full life. So it's not like one goes down, the other one comes in, because uh, I, I don't think that's how nature works, um, because we all have a purpose. But it's, I just thought that it was an interesting dynamic that, that we should observe that more closely uh, in, in, in our groups and families uh, and work. Um, I love my family, the, the family members I'm close to, everybody else, they're, they're pretty much yeah, they're in the periphery. Uh, it's not to, to say anything bad of them, uh, but if I did not grow up with them, they're not, I don't consider them pretty much family. They share the same name and all that and DNA, but if, if, you, if you're not playing uh, with us kids in the backyard or we didn't come to you on, on weekends out to the country or some of the other cousins left, um, then I don't consider those people family. Um, even if you find each other on on social media and follow and, and click like and hey, we're friends now. Um, I haven't seen you in thirty some odd years. I, I don't think you're family. Family is uh, usually in groups, tight groups. They uh, they establish and, and maintain and continue um, that relationship, at least that contact um, yeah, for the long term. But at any rate, um, I, I found that there, there was a lot of sticky issues of um, sometimes we undertake things that are not really our purpose, but we think that it is. Um, but taking care of uh, someone who's dying. And I, I, I know from people from my last job that someone died right there, in the, not in the room, but I, I saw the guy uh, on duty like um, of a Christmas and then he died like two days after I even talked to him and he was he seemed to be like he was plagued with a lot of um uh, I might as well shift into death real quick um so because I'm going into the family thing for some I've been exposed to family issues in the past few weeks and especially over the Mother's Day weekend uh, I'll come back to that next week and I was so happy I don't live near any of these people. I love them. I appreciate them. But it's like, do, do you bring home your, your co-workers? I know you don't. You don't bring your boss over. Uh, you know, like you move in mom. I mean, sometimes these circumstances, they happen, you know, somebody loses a home, they got to bring in the old one, the old folks in to live with you and you got your wife and kids or you know, your husband and children, and you have your own situations, and uh, these things happen. You know, I've, I grew up in a household, we had to bring a family member, and that, that stayed there for a long time, very long time, until my mother died, both my parents died, that person's still alive, and um, uh, so, and that started with the kindness, something that my parents thought that they had to do, but they could have handled it better, but since that's that those were the only decisions, you know, that those were the only tools they had at the time. That was 40 some odd years ago. And people think differently. They were born at a different time and uh, their attitudes are different. So I have to respect that. I'm not saying that I was happy with the outcome. Um, but in the case of, you know, the dying relative is the same thing. Years, many years later, you know, I have, a, I have a, an extended family to the sister-in-law and uh, they're, they're having two people who are, um, you know, one already passed away, the other, and they have another one's even closer. And that person is definitely uh, in a terminal situation. And it's just a matter of time. So they're going to get hit with two blows back to back, basically. And this is not like a, uh, a twice removed cousin or anything. This is in, within their family nucleus of the parents and the siblings. So it, it's even more painful because you really get attached to them. But um, uh, I have two siblings. I'm, I'm not that attached to them. And uh, I was not that, that attached to my parents. So, uh, but I go into that next week because I, I wonder if you're going to find that interesting that 
realizing that you don't have to be forever attached to the people that you, you the family that you were born into any more than you're attached to a job. It's a job you can always quit. They can always fire you. Uh, the job can lose the business. Um, and then people get laid off. Uh, somebody can get promoted ahead of you and then there's no position for you and um, so on and so forth. Uh, it happens the same with any kind of group. Uh, you, you join a, an organization and it's the same thing. You, you're not born into it, but something qualifies you to be in that organization. So for the family, it's the same thing. It's an organization. You're, you, you're born into it. So that's your qualification. It's just that you, you showed up and then they, they're the ones who they're supposed to be in charge of showing you the ropes. Um, and hopefully you turn out to be all right. You have a good life. Um, so having a good relationship with those people that are already there uh, to guide you through your life, life's journey, a part of your journey. And I'll get to that in a moment um, because I've, I've realized that we all seem to think that when we lose something, it was ours, but then it wasn't ours to begin with. Um, it's your job, the job that you lost yours forever. It isn't. It's it, you. You get complacent, and get comfortable, and then you think it's going to be. You don't want to move up. Um, kind of a stuck mentality. Families, it's kind of the same thing. And I, I wonder if you. I wonder if you're wondering why I'm talking about families or attachment. It's the ice cream example is just came to me because it, it, it's it's going to come and go. And mom and dad are going to come and go. One day they're going to be young and vibrant and you're a little kid and you're bouncing around like crazy, you know, getting hurt and they're picking you up and showing you the ropes. And next thing you know, you're on your two feet and, and, and you got another sibling who's little and you're showing that sibling, you know, when they fall, they fall flat on their face. You pick them up and tell them, hey, this is how you do it. Or you observe them. Uh, so there, there has to be a healthy a very healthy combination of um, involvement, but not interference. In interference meaning that the things that we need to learn on our own, because you can't teach them that, um, we just have to observe to make sure that they don't veer into a path where there's going to be danger. There's going to endanger them in some way permanent, where they check out before their time is up. But then nobody knows where their time is up. So uh, you, you figure that one out. But um, so the trip that I took, there was none of the attachment. Uh, I did not feel that I had to rush, rush to do anything on a cruise ship. I don't think it robbed me of any enjoyment, but it was more like the first time I did it, it was like, okay, I'm cool. I, I know how this works now. So this, the sense of wonder was gone. Uh, and I, must, my, I smile when I say that because it's, it's a cruise. It's not supposed to be a, a cure for cancer or anything like that, but it's, it's a way to, it's a form of getting away, a um, little bit of an escape and not necessarily transformational. It's the experiences uh, when I meet people and, and I see how they live and how they interact. And I, I, I'm, I'm taking it all in. I'm, I'm a people watcher. Um, and I, it's amazing how everybody starts off really, really happy and they get their drink on and I, I get it. It's not judgment anyway. I did not get my drink on at all. I'm like, let me just go ahead and get settled in, stretch out, get a shower, primp up a little bit. I'm going to get that fancy meal. And I had, I had an agenda, you know, I wanted to treat myself to the first night sailing. I don't care about the party. Uh, There's a party in my mind all the time. I'm good to go. Um, I like to observe everybody else doing their partying, though. That's always very fascinating. Uh, and I wonder if that they bring that home with them, like, oh, I remember that time. Probably have the time they don't even remember what they did, unless somebody puts it on YouTube. Um, that's the uh, that's the downside. I, I, I am old enough to remember. I have pictures, but before the social media phenomenon hit, so there's no internet. I, I can actually say that. Um, and I offer no apology for that. I'm glad that I lived through the time that I lived through um, because it was a fantastic time. And uh, 
I don't want to repeat it, but it was fantastic because I've got the experience from the, the low tech side of the house to the high tech where my phone tells me, yeah, it's fine on me right now. I'm pretty sure. Uh, it tells me, it finishes my sentences. It's probably the best relationship I've ever been, been, been in. That's pretty bad. That's really sad. Um, I, I try to ditch my phone as much as I can, but I, I document some, some many things, uh, pictures and people that it's always with me. So um, I, I'd like to go someplace where I don't have to use it, maybe for a little while. Maybe I should just get a camera and then just ditch the phone only to, to send out stuff for, for all of you to hear and, and see. Uh, to share my 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 journeys because it, uh, we we get dependent on on things and uh, we get really attached to them. But um, but you won't find me walking and looking down at the uh, at the idiot box. That's what they used to call uh, the TV well, back when it was a the boob tube. It had it had bulbs and all that. It, uh, if you ever got it at real TV, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I was that. I was that kind of kid. I used to take apart radios and and the TV. I don't know. I don't know why. I wanted to see how it worked. But uh, today you can't do that because it has my uh, your cell phone is a mini computer and computers used to be you know occupy room large rooms and it was handled by people who wore lab coats and not today. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry can. Um, can carry a little computer with themselves and uh, we have knowledge at our fingertips um, and sometimes the knowledge is there before you even have the thought it's already the algorithms are already formulating uh, possible scenarios for you long before you even you even do the search on your phone or your computer um, i'm not going to get too much into that because that's a fascinating uh, topic but um but at the same time, we're, we grow attached to these things because now we, we don't memorize things and um, can't take it with you. So I've, let me shift into a, another topic. I, 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 I like to document food because some there's people who know me who really enjoy my documenting food. I started that and I, I was not even on Instagram when I started doing that, I'm taking pictures of food, fruits, mostly uh, still lifes and all that. I should be painting this instead of uh, taking pictures, but um, people love that stuff. And I had a friend who insisted, you know, your food food pictures is really great. You should put them on Instagram. So I ended up joining Instagram on a, on a whim. Yeah, there was no other agenda at the time. And um, I've, I found myself thinking more and more, do I really give a damn about documenting this meal? Because I just want to sit here quietly. And just the mere thought of, I'm just nourishing my body and also with the quiet and I'll go into quiet here before I close the nights because I want to go into the top the actual topic for the 10 transformational lessons. Um, I should call it a challenge, but I, that's not what I started out weeks ago, so I'm not going to go there, but it's kind of a challenge just to see how you can take 30 days to success. Um, and that book should be available here pretty soon. I have some setbacks and um, I'm sorry to say, but you know it happens, and I'm, I'm, I'm I forgive myself for the tardiness. Uh, things happen. Uh, I, I got taken off track completely, and then I, I I lost some of my notes. They're probably packed in a box in a big hurry when I was uh, kicked out of my uh, old place, and then I had to move it into storage. So it's someplace in a storage, uh, in a box. I have to figure it out. If not, I have to recreate my notes. Or reconsider how I want to take uh, the direction for these transformational uh, uh, steps that we should take that I've discovered uh, in recent uh, months. Uh, been building over years and the, the past few months is when I actually, uh, I would say I, I took notice. And I'm sure the same thing could happen to a lot of you, that you have things just staring you in the eyes for a long time. And uh, all they needed was uh, a quiet mind and some peace and quiet and, and just calm. A calm mind is what opened up that intuition and, and brought the, the one next topic that I wanted to discuss was of awareness. So in the awareness stage, so we started with the dissatisfaction and I milked that for a while and then I realized, okay, that people think I'm gonna be full of it because I didn't move from that, but the satisfaction was so big because 
Yeah, here I am talking about it again. So the satisfaction is when you, you actually realize, you know, I don't like what's going on in my exterior life. And I already discussed many times, and I'll do it again, briefly, that whatever it's, it's in your physical world is inside your mind. It came out from your mind. It's, it's probably, if you're unhappy with it, it's probably the stuff you said over and over, this is not what I want. Um, so I want to shift you into saying, and I'm learning with you because I caught myself going away from, from this recently, just driving. And I did that. It pops into my head um, suddenly. And I, I kind of become a little bit, no, I'm not upset, but more like, not even embarrassed, more like, okay, I kind of slacked and I need to get back on track. So it's called awareness. So from the satisfaction is you're not happy with what you're seeing around you. How did I, how did you get there in the first place? And, and when you get there and you don't like the external results, then you have to look inside. So there's going to be in the next week, if you want to challenge, I want to challenge you to, to ask you question, you know, when something happens and you, and you ask yourself, is it me? <laughs> Go ahead and shift into, is it me? And then look inside of yourself and address your, your inside and then compare how you're feeling. And I, I know that feel, you know, talking about feelings is kind of hard for some people. I, ha, I was one of those people, but how, how it makes you feel. Do you, do you feel content, uh, happy? Do you feel sad or just, just really, or angry? Anger, anger is another sign that you're not liking what you're seeing, but you're not, you're not fixing where it came from. So of the things that I manifested in my life in the past year, uh, boy, oh boy. Um, I told myself recently, watch what you're saying because you've already, you've already discharged that weapon. And when it went off, it went off all over the place. It wasn't even the saloon doors, the, the doors swinging. And it wasn't even like that. It was more like a, uh, a detonation at a quarry. It, it was just really shattering and it was it came in layers one after another and these are things that i retrace back which is why you should keep a definitely a, a did i mention that you should have a diary then a diary just a notebook just just write it down every day or every week i, I don't want to be uh, too tight like some people teach that stuff like oh you, you're gonna manifest good stuff if you just write it every day don't waste your damn time writing every day all day i've tested it I have tested it. I forced myself to, to, to write stuff and none of that stuff came, came to fruition. Not in the way that I was taught that it would, it, because the writing connects uh, the physical with the mental. And, and it's a way to tell your brain, I'm believing, I'm, I don't want to say a lie. I'm believing my new reality, my new life, my new persona and so forth. So whatever it is that you want to change, improve. It has to come from that thinking, from that moment, um, a realization. So, so the next topic from this satisfaction comes awareness. So awareness is you, you, you already know you're, you, you're just satisfied with what your life has turned out to be, what you, you know, not making enough, you know, your marriage is suffering, et cetera. Uh, you have uh, family problems. Uh, I will talk about families again next week. Um, tell you about my brothers. Um, and I'm glad that I'm single and I live alone. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm so sorry. That's, that's naughty, but I don't have those problems. I'm not married. I don't have those problems anymore. I just, just don't have the, the interaction of uncles and cousins and I don't have that stuff. And I'm very happy because it's, I can just work on myself. So, but you guys may have these situations, right? You have, you have your parents are still alive, which is great. I think it's fantastic. Um, you have siblings, which is great again, and you could be an only child. Yeah, what a great opportunity to work on you because you don't have those same distractions and you, unless your parents are really big on hovering. Um, I don't do hovering very well, which is why I left home so early. Um, so consider these, these as challenges for yourself that uh, you should write something down. I, I'll give you one example. Uh, and I didn't want to go too much into it. Um, money. There was a, 
there's a product that I've designed. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of, um, of vision boards and I don't like vision boards because the vision board is limiting. So you do a square or maybe a circle and, and, and it's, um, it could be uh, cut off from magazines. That's how that stuff started. You know, you like, you like a picture of a car. That's the car that you're dreaming someday you're gonna buy or you just really want that car and you just clip it and then just, you know, paste it onto a piece of paper or cardboard or into a book. Some people do books and I do books. The book is something you can carry with you and, and then just put it in a bag. And, and if you need to add something to it, you can, you can tear a page from a magazine and then just stick it in there. And then later on, when you come home and you have some quiet time, you can clip it, the successors, and, 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 and then you can just take a few minutes and just add it, just paste it or tape it to that page to, to map out your, the trajectory of what your you want your life to be. So I did a little bit differently. Um, I'm not gonna show you here. I, I, that's something that I, I, I prepared, customized, it's customized to every, to, to every client. It's not that expensive, but it takes some time to put it together uh, because it's a narrative. I would have that, to give you a questionnaire and, and ask you these questions that are, that are gonna force you to think about where you wanna go, who you wanna be and how you wanna be. And then we need to put you there. And in order to do that, you should put your book. So this is going to be a, a roadmap. If I just did a board, anybody can do a board. You can go on any website and do a board. If you have PowerPoint, you can do a board and you can clip. Uh, you don't even have to buy magazines and trash them, you know, and cut them all up and put them into a physical um, product. You can do it into a digital product, which is what I did. So mine I, is done digital. Uh, that's a digital product. Um, uh, product, but it's also downloadable into a physical product if you wanted it. So um, I experimented with the formatting and I was thinking about money. I just, off the cuff, I knew there was money coming from different places, but I had no idea about the timeline and, and the amounts. So I just shot some numbers and then I started writing, writing myself checks. So you can do that. You can go on Canva or Shutterstock. They do uh, do blank checks. Uh, you can do it yourself uh, if you don't if you don't want to contact me and do this product because um, it's more comprehensive. This is really going to map out things you want to do. Let's say, say for the next six months to a year. So it's it's going to be a custom product, but you can you can test this right now. You can go online. Uh, I know if the people don't want to pay for these accounts, uh, they don't cost that much per month, and you can cancel it. You can do a Seven-day trial, you should have enough time to do a seven-day trial like Canva or Shutterstock to produce something. I know Shutterstock.com has, um, I, I, don't, I don't work for them, so I don't get any money, um, but they have a great product. Um, if you want to get a blank check, you select whatever format blank check they have, uh, edit the picture, you, you type in your name, and you put a date, just say date, and then you write in like you do a check, personal check, you write it to yourself. And then you put the amount and then you write out the amount like you do it on a check and then you save it and then you, you can download it to your computer if you want and let it go. You could print it, send it out to, for printing and then they just, I wouldn't go as far as framing it, but you could frame it or put it in that book. If you have a notebook, just print it. If it doesn't have to be pretty, just print it and stick it in a notebook someplace where you can see it. If you want to, you can put it on a wall or you could easily put it on the door, behind the door. I show this to other people I work with. I put it behind the door, tape it to your front door. As you leave for work every day, you see that, okay? And, and I'm gonna go back to the awareness that, that you what you think is what you end up doing. How you do it is the one thing you have to eliminate from the from this equation because if you if you think too much about the how, then you're going to get all tripped up. It's not going to happen at all. So I knew there was some possibility of money, and some of it I just dreamed up. Like I had no reason. Maybe my business was going to take off, and I was going to be able to generate uh, this kind of revenue. Uh, I just made up a you know, just a quick scenario, and I just paid myself X amount of dollars. I did this like every other few months. So I, I timed them and each month that I wrote a check for, 
it had a different amount. But the amount, of course, you can guess it was a much higher dollar amount, okay, from when I started. So in past month, there was a money situation that was coming, but I, no one knew when that was going to hit and how much it's going to be, or what the uh, uh, what was going to happen. And it finally came to fruition. There was some delays, and I just I was just I had a calm mind because I knew it was coming. But like I said again, I had to forget about the how. The how was completely out of my hands. And if you treat, treat anything that you manifest as it's out of my hands, but this is how I'm going to put myself in the direction of what I want, you will end up aligning yourself with that goal. So try this. I know I'm running out of time, which is it's great. I'm, I'm, I'm pushing to uh, be more efficient. Um, so you, you have to develop, develop awareness. So if you're dissatisfied and you're listening to me tonight, that's great because that's going to push you to, to be better. So try to check put a date and the amount and then download it. And like I said, I put it against the wall, whatever, however you want to display it, or you can do it on your computer screen on your desktop. It's right there like every day, but I don't want you to, to write on a piece of paper every day. I mean, you can write it on a diary. I wrote myself a check for, thank you. I'm so grateful. I've wrote myself a check today for X amount of dollars. And you put the date and let it go. Because that's exactly what happened with me when I let it go. I had a bunch of checks and just like, I wouldn't say negative, but things that were not things that I wanted to happen, happened <laughs> one after the other. But then the, the things that were positive, like those checks, they came at intervals where I believe were the right timing where I would make the best use of the money. Not before when I wanted it or not, not, not necessarily on the date that I had selected. I just randomly selected a date when I started. And then I just like every two, three months, okay, I'm gonna write myself another check for yeah, another, another bunch of money, okay? Um, so work on awareness this week. The awareness that you want to improve and you want to attract only the things you want. And be aware that Whatever you think is what, whatever you thought already is what you're seeing at your home. Whatever you're driving, you don't like your car. I, I can go through the whole list all over again, but think, give it some thought. And next week, I want to talk about uh, more about the attachment issue and some families because it, um, some of this uh, manifestation stuff is going to come in handy for you if you're you having any issues with your family or you just not feeling as joyful being around them. And uh, it should all. Uh, it should always be about finding a little place of joy and time. And so um, with that said, I, I'm going to uh, let you go. I hope you have a fantastic week. Write yourself a check. You deserve it. I know you do. So I'll see you next week. And I'm going to be in Alaska next week. So we'll see how that's going to turn up. I'm not making any solid plans. Once I get there, I think I want to wing it and see where it takes me. How about that? And I hope I, you, uh, you enjoy coming along with me on my little adventures. So I'll see you again soon, next Monday.